What's up kids? Today we're gonna do something about this big white wall. Okay, so this is an important tool. We're not gonna do art today. We're gonna do something art related. And it starts with this right here and this. I'm going to not only stretch my own canvas, but build my own canvas stretcher bars. This is new territory for me. And the only reason I decided to do this was because of this gigantic wall. Normally I would have just bought a canvas for this wall, but it's so big, it needs a really big canvas. And I don't have a car big enough to hold a canvas that will fit <laughs> this wall. Figured since I'm gonna be stepping into new territory, I might as well share it with you guys so maybe we can all learn together. Hopefully I don't mess this up terribly. I need something to start. Look out, he's dangerous. There's a lot of cutting, there's a lot of tape. Normally I wouldn't wield dangerous implements. This one, yeah, is four feet, and this, this one is six feet. Building a pro stretcher frame is easy. You buy two kits, you apply your own wood glue into the center notches of the braces, screw them together, join the bars, and square the frame. Oh good, I don't have a square. So let's get to it. First off, we've got to uh, go get the canvas. Now I've had the canvas for a while. Uh, I did a video way back where I was uh, restretching my own canvas, and so <clears throat> excuse me, and so I have a little extra left over from that. I hope it's long enough, but I think so. We should be okay. That last canvas job was not fantastic, but uh, wow, my, this is dirty. So we're gonna try to do better this time. N no guarantees, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the sound quality may be weird it's because I'm gonna be over there and not here, but this is the best vantage point to see the whole thing. So I will yell at you. More tape. Very well placed tape. It does not want to come off. Tiny hardware. Be mindful. You're gonna need these things at some point. There's these little things. These are the wedges. You know, if you, uh, th when you put the bars together, they wedge in there. Hold on to those. Don't lose them. And make sure you get all the, damn. Make sure you get all the tape off. This is the back edge. This is what you staple into right here. It's this edge, and I'll show you the dynamic. See how it's kind of got that? This is what the canvas stretches over. So the canvas comes across here like this and then rolls around. More plastic. All right, some tools you are going to need for this process, and I gotta get this done fast because my battery's gonna die and I gotta change it. Screwdrivers. I, I, don't, I don't remember what kind I needed, so I bought, brought two pliers. You're probably gonna mess up when you put the staples in, so you're gonna need to pull some staple gun. Mine happens to be wired, which can be a bit of a pain, but it also makes sure that you're gonna deliver some serious power. Some extra staples. I'm using these kind of deep ones because I wanna make sure I get them pretty deep into that wood, hold that canvas good, and then of course, wood glue. I have Gorilla wood glue. You can use any wood glue you want. Step one is to join the braces at the center notch for best results. Apply wood glue before joining. That is the center notch. Two of them, of course. Make sure you check for fitment. So you basically, you put some wood glue on this uh, in here, and then you put these together, and then you take these screws, and you screw them in here. The problem is, is that I know right away that that screw is, because of the way this hole is, it's kind of off-centered to the, I'm probably gonna have to make sure I come in at an angle or something because it's going to mess up. It's just gonna come out the backside and not really do any good. So I gotta make sure I come in at an angle. Mindful of that. The whole point of the screw is to get it into the wood. Stop laughing at that. With the wood glue, it's important to understand, you don't need a lot. You don't want it squishing out all over the place. You need a little bit, it's just really there for a little bit of support. That's probably even too much. I might even wipe some of that away. Line these suckers up and squish. Tiny bit of excess. Simple woodworker lesson. You don't need to go nuts. You just need to get it in there past that countersunk hole. That's the little dippy hole thing. You only need to get it just past that enough to secure it on both sides. You don't need to go nuts. It's just for support to make sure it's not going anywhere. We're gonna put this aside for a sec. Step two, assemble and square the frame, then insert the cross brace into the frame. You may need to adjust the frame to make sure it's perfect. These things are pretty snug, you're gonna have to work at them. Okay. 
There's one other tool I forgot. A mallet. If you don't have a mallet, use a hammer. If you have a hammer, don't go hammering away, hammering away. Don't go hammering away like John Henry. Just light little taps, that's all you need. We're just basically trying to get the thing squared up. By squared up, what I mean is some the corners may be a little bit off, and you may need to adjust which one goes up higher or lower. The problem is that every time you do this, it, you're, every time you move it, it kind of comes out of square. It's probably not gonna move it that much. Step three, align the cross braces so that the ends touch directly on the inside perimeter. Lesson learned, I'm gonna flip this over. So what I did with there was I took the, the back side of the frame, put it on the ground so that it's relatively flat. What I was running across is that the frame the other way was too high off the ground for those braces to kind of stay there. Step four, insert the included keys into the stretch apart grooves in a larger space on either side of each cross brace. One here, one there, one there, and one down there. By the way, the wedge side goes out. This side goes against the wood, this side goes out. Facing out. Okay, so what I just experienced here just now in this first one is that I started to press this into the groove, but as I was pressing it into the groove, the bar started to move. The brace started to move. So, uh, that's not gonna work. I need to make sure that the brace stays centered while I'm pushing this thing in. So I was having a real trouble getting this thing square. So I decided to go out and find my T-square, which I could not find. My old drafting days are far long behind me, but I did find my old graphic triangle. This will have to do. If you don't have this to square up the edges to make sure that they're square all the way around, you, you can use just like a, a, a large uh, piece of paper and kind of just kind of measure. You just want to make sure you get the right angle. One side. Like I said, top, and you look at it. I don't know if you can see this, but that ain't square. Not by a long shot, right there. That's square. The problem is, is that when I do this, I can almost assuredly say that it's probably gonna come out of square all the way over here. That's about as good as that's going to get. So to keep that in place right now, we need to get the, we need to staple it. Some people like to do just the back side. Some people like to do the front side as well, inside the little ridge there. I'm gonna do that because this canvas is so big, just for extra stability. Now I need to recheck the braces because that kind of probably messed them up. Now for the canvas. Now choosing how much canvas you need it's not an exact science. You just want something that's gonna wrap over the edge. Because this is a one and a half inch deep canvas, if you do one and a half plus one and a half on the side, that's three, plus a wrap over, maybe another one and a half. So about four or five inches all the way around as excess. And the excess makes a good headband for your sweating so much. I think I tied it too tight, my head hurts. These first four staples are the most important. Here, 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 and there. So I'm gonna roll this over like this. I'm also gonna fold it a little bit like that. You can kind of see how I'm folding it. Try to get it <laughs> It's not as wonky as possible. A great staple, but whatever. <laughs> we'll go get it. And now we do the same all the way around. Opposite sides. This side, that side, then that side, that side. So there it is. In its beauty, there is a 
little bit of wrinkling up here. Not a big deal. Most of that'll go away once I put the uh, the sealant and the gesso on. But there's one technique that I've heard rumor works about making this even tighter because it's not quite as drum-like as I expect. It's hard to do these big ones like that. There's a technique I want to try. You spray it with hot water and then you let it dry. And just like hot intends to do in hot water. It's gonna tighten that sucker up. We're gonna give it a shot. We'll see how this blends out. I think you're gonna be seeing that canvas more in the future. That was a lot of hard work. So uh, now I'm gonna go get myself some tacos. You guys have a great day. Remember, be good today, be better tomorrow. See ya.